Thank you. I beg to move that this House do now adjourn. The question is that this House do now adjourn Dame Maria Miller. Mr. Speaker, and I'm grateful for securing this adjournment debate and even more grateful for the Minister who is here to respond. In December, the Government announced significant changes to the Government's house building planning policy, giving new powers and freedoms to local planning authorities like mine in Basingstoke and Dean through changes to the National Planning Policy Framework to vary their planned house building numbers away from the standard method, amongst other things. The Secretary of State rightfully attached to these new powers and freedoms a single, clear and un unambiguous condition. He said, with these changes secured, there's now an added responsibility on local government to deliver. And it is that responsibility on local planning authorities to deliver at their own plans, which I'll focus on today. Because for too many years, some planning authorities have relied on government for their house building figures, choosing the path of least resistance, doing what the standard formula told them in the absence of having asked council officials to collect evidence, or perhaps for fear of being challenged if they actually challenged the standard method. Um, and had to allocate more people into their planning departments. But, Mr Deputy Speaker, those days are over. Just a month after these significant changes, many local authorities will be still digesting what it means for them. And I hope this debate and my honourable friend the Minister's response will help explain the breadth of these new freedoms and challenge the new responsibility... Uh, sorry, these freedoms and challenge the new responsibilities that local authorities have. I know my local authority, Basingstoke and Dean, published papers to approve their updated local plan with new planned levels of house building for, pu um, for public consultation on the exact same day as the government's new policy changes. And I'm sure behind the scenes, officials and elected councillors will be agreeing how their proposals need to change in light of the government's new policies, which so, could, so readily could deal with the concerns about high levels of house building expressed by thousands of my constituents. And at this point, can I pay particular tribute to the residence groups in my constituency, particularly CAGE and SOLVE, who have worked so hard to make the case to cut house building in our borough over many years. These new government policies are a powerful tool to help achieve that aim. Now, the Secretary of State's statement made clear that the extensive changes that have been made to the MPPF um, of changes that the planning inspectors must take into account. Now, of course, all of the changes apply to all of the country, but certain changes are more important to certain local authorities. And for Basingstoke, which has built homes for, as the Minister knows, for more than 150,000 people since 1960, the most relevant change is the change to the standard assessment model the formula used to determine house building rates, because it is now advisory, an advisory starting point, not a mandatory end point. And in places like Basingstoke, where we have a unique set of factors, the standard method has generated house building numbers in the past that are both inappropriate and unachievable. The local authority is now able to, as a result of the changes my honourable friend introduced, more widely consider um, varying from that standard assessment through exceptional circumstances to ensure that house building in our community better reflects the nuance of our individual situation. Now, I've been campaigning since I was first elected, Mr Deputy Speaker, which I think you can probably even remember, um, for house building that reflects local need, not a formula. And when I call for no more tower blocks and gridlock in the 2005 election, or my first Westminster Hall debate, or working with local environmental groups and residence groups, um, it's what we advocated at the last planning inspector's review of our current local plan. Um, and it's been the subject of a recent petition presented to our local authority, supported by thousands of residents. We want to see house building levels cut to reflect our local need, not a standard method formulated in Whitehall. And I give way to the Honourable Lady. Thank you, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, and thank you to the Right Honourable Member for um, giving way. Um, local authorities are best placed to ensure that the right homes are built in the right places. So does um, the Honourable Member agree with me that we need to protect the voice of local communities in the planning process? Absolutely. 
it's as if she's almost read what I'm about to say. She's completely right, because uh, cutting house building in Basingstoke would better reflect the situation that we have in our community. And that's what my residents want to see, not those numbers continue to set, be set from Whitehall. Give way to the Honourable Gentleman. For right Honourable Lady for Basingstoke for bringing this forward. And, and the house building and how it reflects upon the our constituency, as you, as you out, out, uh, outlined, is one of those issues. But does the right honourable member not agree that whilst planning policy must protect and enhance our environment, and I think that's what you're saying, it must also focus on the needs of an area, and also a material consideration must be on economic development and job creation. And this has to be a weighted concern that planners should give due consideration to. And the Honourable Gentleman is absolutely right, and each of those considerations is diff different in our individual constituencies. So rather than taking a sledgehammer and telling each of our local authorities how many houses to build, they should reflect that nuance that my Honourable Friend has just talked about. And as the Secretary of State set out uh, when he announced uh, the, new, the changes to the National Planning Framework, um, it is for local authorities and their councillors to be using these new powers. And in Basingstoke's case, that means Basingstoke and Deanborough Council and our councillors. They have to take responsibility for using the new MPPF. They have the new powers to use. They understand the pressures of exceptionally high house building in Basingstoke uh, and the pressures that have been put on services, especially the NHS. And those councillors must use these new powers to cut house building at least until the NHS is caught up. But I would argue until they find a way to further increase the capacity of our roads, uh, which is technically very difficult indeed. I give way to the honourable gentleman. I'm grateful to the right honourable member, uh, and she's talking about services that support those communities. She's describing the Basingstoke area. Um, on, on the point about building resilient communities. The MPPF was somewhat lacking when it talked about uh, some services defined in some fairly old-fashioned terms like community halls, schools, churches. These things are obviously important, but does she agree that we need to also bring that up to date to reflect such things as good broadband, fibre to the premises? The point that my, the Honourable Gentleman has made has been heard loud and clear by the Minister sitting on the front bench, because those are essential services that all of our residents now rely on. He's right. The updated MPPF deliberately does not provide an exhaustive list of the applicable exceptional circumstances. The MPPF now shows that exceptional circumstances are not to be drawn narrowly, which was too often asserted in the past by local authorities, who readily chose to interpret them from case law alone. It's now clear that local authorities, including mine in Basingstoke, are able to set out their case for exceptional circumstances for a large number of reasons. And in Basingstoke, that could be the age demographics of our town. We are the most rapidly ageing population in Hampshire, with our over 65s growing by 77% in the last decade. But the primary and most compelling factor that makes Basingstoke and Dean an outlier is our extraordinary levels of historic house building. At the start of World War II, our population was just 13,000. By 1961, 25,000. Today, our population is 186,000. From 13,000 to 186,000 in less than a lifetime. Or put another way, our population is now one and almost one and a half thousand times what it was in the Second World War. Clearly, exceptional circumstances that have a clear bearing on the capacity of my community to absorb future levels of high, house, high levels of house building. Not only is such accelerated house building affecting our natural environment, especially our unique and irreplaceable north flowing salmonoid chalk stream, but it's also putting an unsustainable strain on public services, particularly our local roads and the NHS. Now, the government has invested record sums into my community, uh, but we are fast feeling maxed out. A brand new hospital, but not until 2032. £60 million on road improvements, but there's now no additional capacity technically possible. So residents are clear. 
Thousands want to cut house building levels. Living in a constant building site with more than a thousand new homes being built every year, green space disappearing every day, roadworks trying to squeeze the last ounce of capacity out of every road and junction. Enough is enough. Basingstoke and Dean published their local plan, um, which clings to the now outdated policy of standard method as its endpoint, as if it continued to be set in stone. As a, result of the draft, uh, as a result, the draft plan fails to slow down house building and actually ratchets up building rates over time to dizzying levels, and it completely fails to reflect our exptional circumstances I've just outlined. I give it way to the Honourable Gentleman. Well, right, Honourable Lady, for giving way. And, of course, people also have to actually live in those communities and also be entertained. And uh, music... Does she agree that music venues are enormously important for the cultural talent pipeline? And the agent of change principle sought to protect them from neighbouring development. That's why it was incorporated into the planning policy guidance. Does she therefore agree this now needs to be enshrined in, in, in law to strengthen the protection for music venues and for our musicians of the future? Well, the Honourable Gentleman may not, have, may not know, but I'm the mother of two musicians, and I would have to agree with him for fear of uh, the consequences if I didn't. And I hope the Honourable Gentleman, the, the Minister, has listened to that as well. He makes a very valid point. Now, I know, Mr Deputy Speaker, from conversations I've had on the doorsteps in Basingstoke for many years that excessive housebuilding is one of the number one issues of, uh, it's the number one issue for many residents. So it's so disappointing that the Borough Council hasn't yet exercised its new powers, especially given all of the hard work that the Minister has put into changing the MPPF to better accommodate places like Basingstoke with exceptional circumstances. Now, some of my councillors have supported a short-term approach, bagging the reduction in the five-year land supply to four years, but, they don't share, but surely they should also care, share my concern that they could easily see further manipulation of developments being carried forward to make that apparent gain evaporate quite quickly. What we need is the long-term solution, not a quick fix. But I am, Mr Deputy Speaker, an optimist. Basingstoke and Dean Borough Councils uh, started its public consultation on the 22nd of January, and this will continue to run to the 4th of March, um, so that residents listening uh, who are interested in the local plan, they're interested in house building levels, uh, and they will want to take part, and also perhaps support my petition at the same time, calling on the council to use their new powers to make the case to cut house building levels to the planning inspector. Now, nothing is guaranteed, that's obvious. Evidence has to be presented, but the case also has to be made, the case that is right for the community, um, and that certainly is not continuing house building at the levels they are now. Now, I hope, Mr Deputy Speaker, perhaps to embolden Basingstoke Council to make changes, um, the Minister might be able to answer um, a couple of questions um, to help them on their way. Particularly, will the planning inspector be expecting new interpretations of exceptional circumstances following the recent changes made to the MPPF? Too often in the past, I've been told, it only applies to the Green Belt. My reading is that is no longer the case. Would he expect every local authority to at least acknowledge the new MPPF policies in their local plan? And would he share my surprise of local, and, uh, would he sh share the surprise of local residents if any local authority were to completely ignore the new MPPF policies and act as if no change had happened at all? Now, nothing is more important to me than making sure everyone in my constituency has a place to live an affordable home, um, and it's Conservatives that have made sure in my constituency that affordable homes make up 40% of all new homes. But Basingstoke has for decades been making up for the lack of house building elsewhere, in London and throughout the South East and beyond. Now, the government changes to the MPPF mean that now our local planning authority, Basingstoke and Dean, can take responsibility for ensuring their house building plans reflect the exceptional circumstances I've outlined in Basingstoke and indeed in neighbouring Oakley and other surrounding villages, where the vast majority of, of house building has actually taken place. 
So the Council must relook their plans, drawn up before these important new government policies, and do what is right. And I believe what is right to, is to cut house building to a level which is appropriate for our community, taking into account the sort of nuanced circumstances that the Secretary of State talked at, about when he launched these new policies. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Minister. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. And, uh, May I begin by thanking my right honourable friend for uh, securing this debate today and for the excellent speech she has just delivered on behalf of her constituents. She clearly stands up uh, very much for her constituents, and I know that they will have been listening tonight. Um, I know that housing and planning is an important issue for the people of Basingstoke and indeed for many people across the country, and that is exactly why we have taken steps to update the national planning policy framework as we did just before Christmas. This government wants to build more homes, but we want to build them in the right places. We want to build them more quickly, more beautifully and more sustainably. And the right way to deliver this is through a reformed planning system, which works. We are clear that it is only through up-to-date local plans that local authorities can deliver for communities, where they can protect the land and the assets which matter and create the conditions for more homes to be delivered all across the country. Um, as the House knows, we consulted last year on a series of proposals and received more than 26,000 responses, demonstrating the interest of uh, planning to so many communities up and down the land. The resulting update of the framework builds on the Leveling Up and Regeneration Act from last year also and delivers on the intent set out by the Secretary of State uh, the right honourable member for Surrey Heath uh, last year. And it does so in a way that seeks to promote the building of the right homes in the right places with the right infrastructure, which will ensure the environment is protected and give local people a greater say on where and where not to place development. I completely understand my right honourable, happily give way to the honourable lady from Oxford West. Uh, uh, for giving way, and uh, may I? Uh, congratulate the right honourable member for securing this debate. On the local say point, uh, I wonder if he might just expand slightly also on the placement of things like solar farms. It is a wild west. In places like Oxfordshire, we have a number of solar farms coming forward, including one the largest possible in Europe, in Botley West. It does not feel like, for those that are over 50 megawatts, the local say has anything to do with it. Did he consider that when they were creating this policy? Well, I'm grateful to the ladies for her comments. Um, I think many uh, colleagues around the House will have experienced solar farms both on a constituency basis and then also uh, from a national policy consideration. There is obviously a trade-off to be made here. Um, Liberal Democrats are extremely keen on renewable energy, as we all are. There are implications to that. But she is right to highlight that that has to be considered within the appropriate boundaries of the individual areas. That's exactly why the government amended the National Planning Policy Framework. It's exactly why the Conservatives are seeking to establish that balance and will continue to try to, uh, to uh, um, ensure that balance works for communities, but also gets us the energy that we need so that when we switch on the lights in the morning, the, the light is there. Um, as I say, we, uh, we consulted on a series of proposals last year and received more than 26,000 responses and demonstrates the importance of planning for local communities. And I understand my right honourable friend's concerns that Basingstoke and Dean District Council has seen a high level of housing delivery, including in recent years, in excess of that set out by the adopted local plan in 2016. And indeed, the housing delivery test results for 2022 published in December, show that the district has delivered more homes than is required through the test. As my right honourable friend has outlined in her excellent speech to begin this debate, um, she knows that there are a number of measures which were announced in the National Planning Policy Framework, and I hope, to, if I can just uh, highlight a number of those, which may assist the District Council and other local councils bringing forward their local plans. Firstly, as my right honourable friend indicated, we have been consistently clear that the standard method is a starting point for local authorities in assessing what to plan for and that it does, does, does not set a mandatory target. The framework now sets this out in national policy. Local authorities should be in no doubt that the outcome of the standard method is an advisory starting point 
for establishing housing requirements through plan making. This means that local authorities, again for the avoidance of doubt, can put forward their own approach to assessing needs where certain exceptional circumstances exist. Secondly, the revised MPPF. Now, uh, I'll happily give way to my honourable friend. Right. Honourable friend, confirm that there will be more types of exceptional circumstances that will be put forward in the future than maybe has been put forward in, uh, put forward in the past. Uh, I'm grateful to my, my right honourable friend for her uh, for intervention. Um, I, I'm absolutely certain there will be more cases for exceptional circumstances that will be put forward in the future, and I would encourage councils to consider them if they believe that they apply. I would expect by logic that there will be more cases for exceptional circumstances to be accepted by the planning inspector, although that will ultimately be for the planning inspector to determine on a case-by-case -case basis. But it is the intention of the government to indicate that, exceptional that cases for exceptional circumstances can be made, that local authorities should weigh up uh, making those, and if they feel that they have a strong case to do so through the process of the planning inspector, that they do that for the good of the communities which they seek to serve. Secondly, the revised MPPF now sets out there may be situations where higher urban densities would be wholly out of character with the existing area, and that this could be a strong reason why significantly uplifting densities would be inappropriate. And thirdly, our changes to the five-year housing land supply policy mean that up-to-date local plans should no longer have to demonstrate a five-year housing land supply. My, my reference friend has articulated some of that already in the considerations that are going on within her constituency in Hampshire, but it is the case that there is additional flexibility around that where local authorities are doing the right thing in terms of getting their plans in place and making sure that they are retained. Um, th there is, and I recognise, and as somebody who has a constituency who has suffered from planning issues uh, over many decades, there is always difficulty in individual local areas around planning. I understand that. It's one of the reasons why I am so keen that we have a message and we are clear that we need more houses, which we absolutely do in this country, but they have to go in the right places. In the same way that it would be incorrect, wrong, irresponsible of us to say no more housing when we need people to get on the housing ladder, when we absolutely value the benefits to our society that a property owning democracy gets and why we should celebrate every single first time buyer that gets on the ladder because they are opening up, it is opening up to them the opportunities that gaining and accreting capital provides. At the same time as wanting all of that, we have to accept that not every area, not every place, not every landscape is appropriate for building on and it is the responsibility of local councils to make sure that they are weighing that up properly, that they are getting ahead of what will always be challenging decisions uh, and that they are having the conversations that they need to have with local communities at the earliest possible stage to make sure that happens. So I would like once again to thank my right honourable friend uh, for Basingstoke for bringing forward this debate. She ended on uh, three questions and I just want to touch upon those before I conclude. I'll happily give way to the honourable gentleman from Wally. For giving way, but it's not just about housing, it's also about public and private facilities and actually, actually a community. Part of that, as I indicated in my intervention on the uh, right honourable member, is about entertainment and social, and social areas, particularly music venues, which are still under pressure. Bringing in the planning policy was, uh, was a good thing. Could he take away, I don't expect an answer tonight, but would he uh, take away the issue of enshrining this in legislation under the Levelling Up Bill to give some strength to local authorities to protect not only local amenities but also the pipeline of talent for our enormously important cultural industries? Uh, grateful to um, the Honourable Gentleman for, for that. Um, I'll certainly take it away. Um, I think there is, and I hope the Honourable right Honourable Gentleman will, will, will um, accept, there is, a, there is always a challenge, there is always a balance about what to put in primary legislation. There is always, uh, and this, the law cannot mandate virtue, and we have to find ways in which we can ensure that our statute book doesn't get too big so that it is unwieldy. There's already an argument that we're heading in that direction over 30, 40, 50 years of, uh, of incessant uh, legislating. Uh, but I do recognise the important point that he is making, and I will certainly give it further consideration in the months ahead, whilst I hope he hears uh, my uh, uh, reticence to automatically move to a, to a set of statements that um, uh, legislation is always required in all cases. Um, to my right honourable friend's points about uh, three questions, sorry, uh, at the end of her speech. Um, in terms of a question about exceptional circumstances, I hope I've covered that to some extent. It is absolutely 
the case that local authorities, where they think it is uh, reasonable and proportionate to do so, where they think they have a clear case for that, they should put that forward. It will be through the process to determine. It will be for the planning inspector to determine. I would expect more exceptional case, exceptional circumstance cases to be made, and uh, uh, it is for the planning inspector to determine uh, the uh, the outcome of those based on the merits or otherwise of it in individual circumstances. Be happy to do so. Much. Um, and on that particular point about exceptional circumstances, many local authorities appear to be concerned that in, in pleading exceptional circumstances, this will land them with a big legal bill that will be challenged in the courts. Can he give some comfort to um, those planning authorities which may feel that, um, that, that in fact this will be something which will be looked upon by planning inspectors as um, something they, they come to expect? My Russian friend highlights um, a continuing challenge with the local plan making process whereby there are other actors who have, in, who have uh, uh, um, uh, issues and, and considerations which they make. Um, it, it is absolutely vital that uh, the planning system works. The planning system will never be perfect and the planning system will never give everybody the outcome that they wish. But it is important that local planning authorities representing their local areas have the ability to, ha to fully consider the importance of planning for the local area to put forward in good faith uh, their arguments, whether it be about exceptional circumstances or just through the conventional process, and have that discussed in interaction with the planning inspector on behalf of the Secretary of State. And they should be, and, they, and I would encourage them to do so uh, and to recognise, whilst this is not a new issue which is being raised rightly by my right honourable friend, that that shouldn't retard the ability of people and organisations and councils and planning authorities to have the debates and discussions they need, both with uh, their local communities and with the planning inspector. On the second question, we absolutely do expect local authorities to take into account the MPPF. It's been clear that that MPPF is extant from the moment it is in place. There is a tra transitional arrangement for some elements of it at the end, but it is for local authorities to take in that into account. And uh, I would share surprise uh, if uh, local authorities were not doing that, because the whole purpose of how they approach, recognising transitional arrangements, recognising that different local authorities will be in different places and they will have to work out precisely how to consider it, but it is vital that local authorities take note of the national planning policy framework and the update that has been provided. Um, Honourable colleagues, uh, and uh, to conclude and to wind up the debate, um, it is the, I know planning is hugely important for local communities and my rational friend has articulated in great detail the, uh, the particular issues in Basingstoke and Dean and I know all, as constituency MPs we all have those individual circumstances um, but colleagues and my rational friend is absolutely right to raise these points my rational friend is absolutely right to highlight the changes that have come and the opportunities uh, that they provide and she's right to stand up for her constituents it is important that we get planning right things will never be perfect but by having these conversations by making the changes I hope we can make progress as a government and as a country to build more homes but build them in the right places the question is that this house do now adjourn as many of that have been say aye, aye. aye. I think the eyes have it the eyes have it. Order, order. The proceeding has ended. 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 The proceeding has ended.
The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended.